Today I'm going to take you through drawing a an aged corn that you may have laying around. I don't know, I did for quite a while. I think this has been with me for about a year. And I just love the way the leaves look when they're splayed out from the centre corn. Take off the ones you don't need um, and make it into the sort of corn that you want to draw. You can take off some of the sort of fibrous threads that come off as well. Splay it out so you get quite a nice composition. And then have a think about the medium you'd like to work with for the drawing and how you want the corn to be positioned for your still life. As you can see, it's taken me a while to have found a position that I like for it. Now I have, I'm going to think about my pencils. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use a 4B sharpened pencil. Make sure it is sharp. I think Stapler are the best quality ones, actually. I'm also going to use an eraser, which has been shaped to basically I've cut it into a triangular shape and I'm also going to be using a propelling pencil because it gives you that sharpness back into a drawing so um and a sharpener of course because you want to keep everything sharp as you're working and now I've got my composition ready I'm going to start my drawing I'm going to be working on an A4 sheet of paper just normal printer paper is fine, but if you want to do invest in it as a more sort of special picture, then you would use cartridge paper. I'm going to do my landscape format so that I can get the nice splayed out leaves in. And I'm going to use masking tape to tape my paper down, although you don't have to, but I quite like it being fixed. As it's on a board, I can always rotate the board if I need to. Now I'm going to start with my other 4B pencil. I'm going to alternate probably between the two of them, depending on what mood I'm in. So I'm going to do a very sort of loose gestural drawing to begin with, which is a very free flow movement, just to get the general feel of the um, shape of everything. Just very, very rough. Keep it vague. Keep it simple. Keep it loose. Keep it very, very general to begin with. Keep it as vague for as long as possible. And notice how I'm changing the way I hold the pencil as well. I can hold it from the tip. It means it makes it much looser as a drawing. So I'm just really getting into the flow of everything and seeing what I like and don't like about the corn and the leaves. And, and then when I'm starting to feel a bit more confident that I've got the sizing right, I can start to add in a little bit more um, specification for the form by darkening the lines because I'm getting more confident about what I'm seeing. Just putting it on the leaves, enjoying the shapes, enjoying the flow, enjoying how my pencil moves around the page, changing the way I hold the pencil occasionally, not getting too specific still, it's still quite vague as you can see. Starting to enjoy that little um, stalk bit on the end of the uh, corn and thinking oh it's quite going to be quite nice to come back to that just getting the general feel still now what I'm doing is I'm shading using the side of the pencil all over and the reason I'm doing this is twofold one is because it gets rid of the whiteness of the paper and the other one is it gives me a sort of undercoat for light and shade later on now I'm blurring it in or blending it in with my fingers you could equally use a blending tool or a piece of paper but I like to get sort of um, right into the uh, physicality of it now once I've done that I'm going back in and I'm uh, rubbing off some of the areas I don't need and then in stating some of the detail. I'm beginning to get more confident. I'm wanting to put in the detail now. And so that's what I'm doing, still using a 4B pencil. And make sure you've got the right thickness of the corn. Don't make it too slender. And you can see that the edges are quite sort of knobbly because that's where the corn is sticking out. You don't have to deal with all of the knobliness to begin with. You can just find the general form for a while 
and then begin to place in the actual kernels of corn. See, I'm getting distracted here because I really like the sort of frayed part of the stalk. Um, and I think it's important to find areas that you like drawing. I'm blending as I go as well with my finger. Still getting into the flow of everything. Enjoying the physicality of drawing. And now I'm starting to look at how the corn is laid out on the... I suppose it's a stem, isn't it? Um, and once you start looking, it really is quite complex. But there are rows, so you could add in... Sorry, columns. You could add in columns very, very roughly. Life is too short to get every single piece of this kernel correct. Um, just do a rough approximation of what you see. I'm using columns uh, because it's going to help me place all of the different pieces of corn at the kernels. Um, I'm going to do an approximation of them and look closely at the shapes. Best to pick out sort of, I suppose, about 60% mm, of what you see rather than all of it. It doesn't all have to be exactly as you see it because the brain of the viewer, when looking at it, will go, aha, OK, so I can see generally those are kernels of corn and so it sort of works and it marries it together do some lines darker than others um, approximately block in the kernel shapes they're quite weird shapes some of them are sort of heart shapes some of them are sort of oblong some of them are like squiggles it depends how much they've opened up and blossomed on the on the stem it's rather a beautiful subject, so if you can um, spend a bit of time doing this, it really is worth it. It's a lovely subject to draw. So I'm just roughing in the kernels of corn best I can, and that's all you can ask for. But do look closely. Look at how all the different shapes come together on that stem. They're almost like um, little damaged teeth, in a sense, little sort of broken teeth or little bits of tooth. And it's very therapeutic once you get into it. And just use the 4B for now. Follow some of the shapes. Keep your eye on the shapes that you're looking at. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. And just carry on filling in the whole stem. I've noticed that at the bottom of the stem, um, it obviously gets a lot smaller, but the direction of the little teeth or the kernels, they're sort of shooting upwards for the bottom part. So I'm just going to go back in and rearrange those. They really do look like teeth at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to reset those frayed bits at the bottom too, because they're all coming out of that stalk-like bit at the bottom. So I'm nearly there with the stem. And now I'm going to reinstate some of those leaves so they actually feel like they're coming out from the right from the bottom of the stem. Now I'm rubbing back some of the darker pieces on the stem, the darker outlines that I don't really need now because they can flatten something. If you're drawing something, it can flatten. And now I'm looking at how the outer kernels affect the outline of the stem. And I'm adding those in. 
it's a bit like drawing the side of a mountain or something. And that really helps to make it feel more like a, a stem of corn. Because if it's too flat on either side, it doesn't really look very realistic. I'm also adding in details. I can see shade within the kernels that's showing me that some are convex and some are concave. So that's important to put in as well. Now I'm giving a bit of a sort of like a smudge across all of it. And then I can always use my eraser to lift off some lighter areas. Or in fact, the propelling pencil, mechanical pencil I've got, has got a very good eraser on the end, which is good for getting into the nitty gritty of smaller spaces. Now I'm coming back to the leaves on the other side. They're like tissue paper almost, but stronger. They're really amazing. They've got these sort of um, threads, these like uh, veins, like a normal leaf, but they, they're sort of, um, oh, they're just really rather beautiful, almost pleated sort of like veins. Um, and they're really lovely to draw. So we need to show the fragility of them plus the misshapen aspect of them plus the threads or the veins. So I'm going for a sort of outline of the leaf first and then I'm going to use shading and a few lines here and there. I'm not doing too much on them because I don't want them to be overloaded with shading because then they'll just make them look heavier.
And now I'm using the uh, rubber on the end of my propelling pencil because it can get into the sort of nitty gritty areas to lift off some of the shading I've done to get some sort of glints of light on the uh, corn cob, the stem, onto each of the kernels. Having said that, not all of them. You don't want to do all of them, but just a few little specks of light here and there. And now I'm putting in a background. I'm using a really strong, um, I'm using a lot of pressure basically to get a really strong background. But can you see that I'm switching direction with my pencil? I'm using a lot of pressure on the pencil, but I'm allowing it to be a very irregular shading. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want quite an impactful background. I don't want it to be very subtle, as you can see. I want it to be nice and strong. So um, some pencils are better for this than others. Again, I think Stekler are the best pencils that I've found. And so I'm resorting back to that one now. Um, and I'm getting right in close to the corn stem. And I'm putting in a very strong background on them, allowing it to be very textured because I want it to be impactful. And you can see I've used some sort of scratchy quality by using the top of the pencil as well to get some cross hatching in there. And again, that's to get a bit of drama going on in the background. Sometimes backgrounds are just sort of a bit insipid and don't really do anything. I want this to be quite a lively, animated picture. So I'm using a strong, impactful background. And now I can go in right close to the parts of the corn on uh, the corn and actually um, support it as an outline by using the background as an outline rather than drawing an outline around everything. I can now go in close, use the darkness of the background to support the shape of the corn and its leaves. So what I'm doing is making a feature of the markings that are coming through from the eraser, the rubber bits that have been stuck under the paper. And I'm going to make a feature of those by actually creating more rubbings underneath so I can get that sort of flecked quality all over the page.
Now I'm just going back in and adding a little bit more depth because I can, because I've got such a strong background, I can up the ante on everything in the foreground. So now I can go back in and my corn and the leaves can actually handle a lot more strength of line because the background's so strong. Now I'm going back in with my little um, tiny lead, the, the uh, propelling pencil, and I'm going back in to get some sharpness back in, some nice sharp little lines. Because after a while with the drawing, everything becomes quite smudgy, especially if you're using a 4B. You've got a very soft line. So it's really nice to go back in and bite into that with a sharper, more accurate pencil.
I'm using the pencil now to get some of those sort of fibrous quality to the um, to the little stem at the end. I'm using the propelling pencil to get a lot more um, detail into the um, stalky bit at the bottom and now into some of those areas of the leaves just to give it a sharpness that I might be missing. So you'll be aware as well that the um, the picture is quite shiny. It's because I'm not using a matte pencil, which I could do. There are matte pencils you can use where you don't get a shine. I quite like a shine. I'm not that bothered about it. But if I wanted to have something which really relied on being a very matte, non-shiny drawing, you can use matte pencils and you don't get the shine. But also you're seeing a bit of shine, obviously, off the light that I'm using.